Hi there, seventh graders. So this is a quick uh, helpful hints video um, going over your unit three activity in English 7B. So basically for this activity, um, it's about you and what makes you you. It's about your identity. There are a lot of things that make you who you are. A lot of times we think of family and friends and hobbies, right? But it also goes a little deeper than that. Uh, a lot of who you are has to do with your heritage and your culture, your background, the, the family members that you know and even may not know. Those are the things that make you, you. So in this project, you get to research your family's ancestry, culture, or their history. And you actually get to decide what to focus your research on. So in other words, your job will get to be to find out a little bit more about your family that you don't already know. So let's look at some possible ideas here. One thing you can look at is your family tree. So that's where you trace your grandparents and your great grandparents and your great great grandparents back as far as you can to learn a little bit about how you got here, how you got here to California. We're all from different backgrounds here in the United States. Some of us are from a Native American heritage which meant your ancestors have been here since the beginning. But many of us have family members who immigrated here, who came from other countries, whether it be from Mexico or from Asia or Europe. Um, so that could be a really interesting thing that you could research um, is your family tree and see how far back you can find relatives. Another thing you can look up if you aren't able to look too far back into your family's history because not everyone can do that. Another thing is uh, you can research your cultural heritage or your ethnicity. So for example, let's say that your family is originally from Mexico. You could look up some different traditions or holidays or um, things that your family believes in, your belief system that are specifically related to Mexican heritage. And that can be what you research. Um, or if you're from Asia or from a like country in Europe, that would be fine too. Another possible choice is to look up, kind of like your family tree, to look up your family's history. So let's say that there's a family member that um, you know or that you've heard of and you want to look up a little bit more about them. This is a chance for you to learn a little bit more about uh, maybe a grandparent or great-grandparent and um, find out what life was like for them um, growing up. So your task specifically in this project is to write a three paragraph research paper. So one page explaining one of these elements and how it has helped shape your own identity. You'll need at least two sources, if not more. You need one primary source. That would be best to be an interview. So an interview with a family member, for example, and then one internet or book source, most likely internet, which can either be a primary or secondary source. So Google will be your best friend in this project as well as some kind of family member or friend. Okay, so to start research, it's good to know what your question is that will drive your research. So here's just some ideas. Uh, you could ask, where is my family originally from? Is it here in the U.S. or are they from another country? For myself, um, I had a family member that really wanted to look into our family history on my dad's side of the family. And so he um, looked into archives and letters and, and censuses way, way, way for years and years and was able to trace back one of our first ancestors. Um, to the Revolutionary War in the 1700s. He came here from England and he found out a little bit about that guy. So that was really cool just to know, wow, my family, part of my family was directly from England. And I had no idea before that. Here's another possible question. You could, if you can't research too much about family, then you definitely know a little bit about traditions um, and beliefs that your family currently has. And you can trace those traditions back to uh, where you're from. So let's say, again, let's say that you are from maybe China. They have different holidays than a lot of 
other Americans do. They have Chinese New Year. So you could possibly explain a specific holiday and how it's different than what other people might be aware of. Uh, you could ask the question, where are my great grandparents from? Or who were they and where did they live and what was it like for them? Or even further back, if you can trace further back than that. Uh, another question is, what impact does my family's culture have on me now? So what beliefs or um, traditions do you have in your family that affect you? Maybe not every day, but maybe they do. Or one other one, um, is there someone in my family that I'm similar to or that has had a big impact on me? Again, I'll share my own experience. Um, for me, my grandmother had a very big impact on me from a young age and even now to this day. I'm much more like my grandmother that than either one of my parents and her hobbies and her interests um, and just how we connected was a big part of me. Um, so I've loved asking her about her childhood and what life was like for her um, because she has meant a lot to me personally. And she's taught me a lot of the things that I know to this day. Okay, so those are just some ideas. So let's get into really how to start. So once you have that question and once you kind of know what you want to be the focus of your project, again, it's only one page, so it's not too, too crazy. Um, you're going to identify who your primary source will be. So that's someone you should interview. If you can't find someone to interview, I mean, it could be an aunt, an uncle, a parent, anyone in your family is fine. You want to come up with some questions for them related to your main research questions. So you can interview them about your heritage or family traditions, or if it's an older relative, you can ask them about what their childhood was like or what it was like if they happened to immigrate here from another country. Possibly it's what they remember about their native country, home country. Um, anything you can find out about your heritage from the person that you interview. If you want to interview more than one person, that's also perfectly fine. And then your other source should be a secondary source. So the internet, Google is your best friend. Um, there's so much information online. You can find out anything that maybe your primary source can't answer. Google most likely will be able to. So if you want to know a little bit more about, um, let's say, let's say again that your family comes from China. Maybe they mentioned something and that made you wonder something about where they grew up or some of the traditions that they had there. You could use Google to add a little information to your project. As you're researching, you should keep notes. So we provided a space in step three for you to take notes um, and to write down the responses that you get from your uh, interviewee and a place for you to add notes from your internet resource. Um, if you need to use an additional like notebook or something, of course that's fine too, but make sure you include some notes in your project in step three. Once you've done your researching and interviewing, then it's good to come up with your topic sentence because that topic sentence is the main idea. It's what everything else should relate to, right? So say what your research mostly ended up being about. And here's just an example. Um, my topic sentence example is many people have influenced my life, but my grandmother has made the most impact. Her Jewish heritage and customs have shaped who I am today. So right away, you know that I'm going to write about my grandma and her customs and what customs have trickled down to me and how I think that that has made a difference on who I am. Once you have that topic sentence, then it's a good idea to outline. Outlines are just a framework for how you will write and the order that things will go in. It really is good to do an outline before you just start writing so that you make sure the sequence of your essay flows nicely and that it makes sense to someone else who's reading it. So this is just a place to put your introduction. So your topic sentence, and then maybe talk about your interview, your supporting statements. So your first source. And then maybe 
in your third paragraph, use uh, your notes from your internet research. And then you'll have a conclusion that just restates your introduction. So basically restating what you said in the introduction again, that's what a good conclusion does. And then we always, always, always recommend that after you have done the outline, it's really good to share with the teacher. So you can share with your teacher, your main teacher of record, if you like, for some feedback or ideas from them. Or you can share with one of the English teachers. That's myself, Mrs. Bryant, or Mrs. Abriani. We both would love to help you make sure that your final draft is polished and is clear and makes sense and that it really is whatever you wanted to communicate in your research project. So basically, we want you to have fun with this. We want you to take this as an opportunity to get to know your family a little better and to get to know yourself a little better. Um, and we look forward to seeing what you have to say about your family. Um, so enjoy. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to do a little research and find out more about yourself. So enjoy it. And we look forward to helping you. There's our emails right there. If you have any questions or you're still not sure how to get started, then please, please, please just ask. All right. Best of luck.